you know, there's there's not a whole lot more I can add to what's been presented already. Like uh, like Dr. Gina said, grit is so important. And like uh, Dr. Zada said, if you do everything, I, I kind of wish I'm still doing the stuff that he said. His talk was so good. And if you can get to know your chairperson, your program director early and show up frequently, uh, that's really important. And things are just going to be different this year because of COVID that it's changed everything. And I think people are allowed to do one away sub I now starting in August. And so that one away sub I is going to become increasingly important. And I know, you know, we're running a little bit behind schedule. So I'm going to try to keep my talk concise and, and, and down by 930. And so um, I'll talk about it. And, and I just want you to know that, you know, every speaker here, you know, I, I, I looked through and I saw uh, Dr. Ponce, you know, Dr. Leal, Dr. Ginata, Dr. Bergschneider, everyone that is going to be here, everyone's volunteering on a weekend to be here and, and giving up part of their life work balance. You saw, you know, I'm juggling my children and, and trying to make this all work is that everyone wants to be here and that we all want to be part of this teaching and this effort. And so if you have any questions or if I don't get to something or my internet connection goes down and you never see me again, um, if you're old, like Dr. Zada, you can email me, my email just right here. And if you're younger, like Saman, you can DM me on the social media, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Um, the young people, y'all can DM me and old people can email me and, and I'm always available. And, and, you know, Dr. Zada said you have to show up and be around, and be there frequently, but it just takes an insane amount of hard work. It really can't be understated. Uh, you know, Dr. Uh, Giannis talked about grit and the ability to keep going. And you know, I, I recently read this book called Grit. It's a really good book. There's a TED talk about it. It's by this wonderful psychologist. And she looked at all these people who were at West Point, like the best of the best of the best. And they have incredible commitment and they have worked years and years and years to get there. And then within the first two or three months, a lot of them quit. And what they found was it wasn't the board scores or test scores or anything else. What they found was their ability to keep going and to keep working hard. And this is so important because uh, neurosurgery is an insane amount of work. And when I think about the sub eye, right, when you go and do an interview, you have 15, 20 minutes with a faculty or a resident. When you go for a sub eye, you're going for three or four weeks. The the one here at UCLA is three or four, three weeks. Uh, other places are three weeks. Some rotations have four weeks. But if you really think about how much time you have, you only have 168 hours and you're giving up time at your own institution. You're paying a tuition money to do an away sub I. And so if you do three weeks, you have 504 hours. And this is not including time that you need to sleep, you know, use a restroom, you know, self care. <laughs> anything else this is really every single minute of that week and so you have 504 hours that week uh or for that rotation you have 168 hours a week and i know that sounds in incredibly cheesy and uh trite but what i want to emphasize is you don't have a lot of time you don't have a lot of time um sometimes you go and you just are working non-stop and this is your one time to make that impression and so you are basically on interview for 168 hours. It's uh, time for you to be everything that you can be, to bring your best game. And this requires that you work very, very hard. And so the number of hours are going to be a little bit, I think, hard. And I know that there are work hour restrictions and that you should definitely maintain work-life balance. But if you are um, motivated and, and, and very... Uh, ambitious student, you understand that this is an opportunity. You'll never have this opportunity yet. Uh, once you graduate med school, you can never do another sub I. It, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm PGY 17. If I wanted to go back and try doing another sub I, they would never let me. This is your one chance in your whole, whole life to do a sub I. And because of COVID, you only get to do one away sub I. And so you have to make it count. You have to make it count. And, and, I think everything that Dr. Zada said was absolutely right. Uh, how you do research, how you publish, being nice, and all those things really determine whether or not you're going to be doing well. And when I think about the advice I want to give to you, to how to be a good sub I, it, it's things I've been telling my junior residents uh, ever since I was a resident up, up at San Francisco. Uh, number one, don't be annoying. And this is really hard to balance because if you realize, if you're like, look, I only have 168 hours a week, I'm going to be there every single hour. And you're 
you're just literally following a resident around for every minute of that day. And I'm just going to be a little bit uh, facetious and try to be a little funny. I I'm not very funny, but I'm going to try to be. The resident goes to the restroom and you go to the restroom too. They're going to want a little space. That I think is annoying. I I'm not sure exactly how else to define annoying, except that's annoying. So don't follow your resident to the restroom. Uh, yeah, uh, don't be annoying, but it, it, it manifests in other ways. It manifests in other ways as well. If there's a conference and it's running late and you have a dying question and you prolong everyone an extra half hour post call because you just have this dying question, your hands up. I know your question is important and maybe there's just a better way to do it with EQ is maybe speak with the speaker offline, maybe send them an email, get the question answered, let them know your passion. But if you violate rule number one and you're annoying, you, they're just, you can't get past two or three. Rule number two, rule number two is don't get in the way. Don't get in the way. So the team is Dr. always Yang, trying you want to a second? Dr. Yang, take it. <laughs> you see someone, she's so, she's, Tracy, come here. Come here. Tracy, come here. Come here. Okay, sorry. My, I. It's not because you mean to, and people are probably being like, "Oh my god, people fall for I'm so sorry. But it happens, and that's why he's bringing it up because I know that people are eager and want to do a lot, and um, you have to be very self-aware, and so you cannot miss those cues from the resident that you're with or the group in the conference where you're making everybody run late because you're asking questions. If you're missing on those social cues, nobody's going to want you to be around. So I'll let Dr. Yang continue now. Kids don't know the don't be annoying rule. My, my kids are sometimes <laughs> annoying. Are you annoying sometimes? Yeah. No, she's not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then don't get in the way. The whole team is so busy and they're always trying to achieve something and get something and, and something and go somewhere. You cannot get in the way and you have to think about how to achieve usefulness. And I thought about this slide and I don't want to be uh, granular. I don't want to be like just vague about it. I want to be really granular. So I was thinking about this slide. If I were a sub I today, which again, we talked about that. They wouldn't let me. I don't know if I could because my, my kids are crying all the time. If I were a sub I today, what I would do is on my sub I, I would show up at 3 a.m. every day. I would. I don't have to take call every day, but I would show up. You know why? Because around 3 a.m. is when the post-call resident is going to start putting up films for the next day. And if I show up and say, hey, what are the, what's the list of patient films that have to be shown up? And if I go and just pull those films up, have them ready by six o'clock. That's one last thing that that post-call res has to do. I, I would just think about things like that. And when you are there, just like someone said, you want to have the social EQ to see a scenario and say, how do I be helpful in this moment and achieve usefulness? You, you saw someone do it right there. She heard a baby crying in the background. I'm sure she's never been on a Zoom faculty meeting where the faculty's baby in the background. She goes, you know what? I'm going to step in in the moment because it looks like he do it. And, and that is not something I told her. We didn't rehearse this. I didn't text her. She saw it. She recognized it. She did not get in the way. And she achieved the use of It's such incredible social EQ. And that's really what happens. When I think about how to do well on your sub I, I think about two things. One is grit. You cannot give up. You cannot give up. If something goes wrong, something goes bad, you keep trying. And the second thing is to achieve usefulness by being able to recognize ways and you can be helpful. And I think that's just one of the ways I thought if you show up early, you can get those films done. That will help achieve usefulness. Okay. 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 I, I'm going to have to have you say, okay. One last thing. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up my, my three-year-old is, do you want to say hi? On mute. Just on mute. I will mute. Okay. Hold on. Okay. The last thing I'm going to finish with this is, guess what? Sometimes it doesn't work. Okay? Sometimes it doesn't work. You're there. You're like the most useful medical student ever. You're so awesome. You're so nice. And they just don't take it. It, it just doesn't work. People don't. It just doesn't work. It doesn't click. And maybe, 
maybe the resident or the attending, maybe they're just not nice. It's not your fault. That's okay. Maybe they're just having a bad day like I am right now. And that's okay too. You don't take it personally. You wake up the next day and say, I'm still going to show up at 3 a.m. And I'm still going to do this and I'm going to still do this well. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.